Space Twins for My Outer Space TV. I'm number one. And I'm number two. And today we're on Planet Orpheus with... Music composer Richard Friedman. Hi Richard, so welcome to Planet Orpheus. So we Hi. understand that you have been, your, well your music has actually been heard through a lot of big movie trailers like Alice in Wonderland, Up, A Christmas Carol, Night at the Museum, Jurassic Park, many, 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 many movies. And actually your music is also found all through matterspace.com and the intro music to this was actually your music as well. So you want to tell us a little bit about it? I'd love to. <laughs> no, I, this was a labor of love for my outer space. Uh, as a kid, I grew up with Star Trek, and I've gone through all the versions. Big fan of Bill Shatner. And I think this uh, website's a great idea. I'm a big fan of science fiction. I just uh, scored a film for Sony called Ticking Clock, which is a sci-fi horror suspense kind of combination flick. Uh, they might change the title if you're looking for it. Uh, mm -hmm. Cuba Gooding Jr. is in it. It's great, great acting. But most of my work is, um, unless I get the phone call for the next uh, avatar, uh, <laughs> most of my work is background music, but music that's very powerful. Uh, trailers have to be driven by music, so I work with an established company that you'll hear the music everywhere. You won't notice it, but you'll realize that's why you went to the movie in the first place, because it's very dramatic. <laughs> yeah. And um, I did a movie for Warner Brothers, A Dog of Flanders, about 10 years ago. That was my first uh, bigger film. And in the meantime, I'm always working, and I don't. I love different styles. I love working from classical to uh, you know, dramatic, hard-hitting stuff, um, uh, battle stuff, love stuff, and that's that's the challenge of a film composer. And uh, I'm a big fan of music theory. And I, as you probably know, I work a lot on computers because that's the future, and and that's what I've been doing well for the last five years, trying to get a computer to sound human, which is very hard, but. It's an art that I love doing. So tell me, Richard, how is it that you get a keyboard to sound like real French horns or a computer to sound like a human? I usually kick it hard, and I, <laughs> I, I get the results. Works. It should be said that technology right now is phenomenal. There are things now that five years ago you never, wouldn't have heard or seen. But I have to say, I always compare making music at a computer to a chef, two or three chefs that have all the same ingredients. They all have the same dough, the same flour, etc and you'll get a totally different result. You have to really understand music, you have to understand style, orchestration. It's almost like doing an accent. It has to seem right. And uh, it's a challenge, but it's, it's very, a lot of fun. So what's your best accent? Uh, I can't do one right now, but I'll change it. Uh, <laughs> uh, but musically, one of the challenges is guitar. Uh, as, as they know, uh, I've done a project with a gentleman standing here, very challenging project. and. Uh, and uh, since I played guitar as a second or third instrument, I just took everything I knew from the instrument and put it on the keyboard and did articulations that made it sound like I was bending a string. It's almost like emulating singing. Uh, guitar is great. Orchestra is my main thing. And uh, emulating an orchestra is a lot of work because yeah, you're basically okay. <laughs> running around the room. <laughs> figure you have 60 orchestra players and you're playing all their parts. And you have to know how they fit together and how they interact. So it's a challenge. Yeah. So how many of your compositions have been recorded by a real-life orchestra before the you know, technology? Hmm. That's a tough question. I did a movie for Warner Brothers that was live orchestra. Then I have many small pieces for movie trailers. That's like a whole movie reduced to two minutes or one and a half minutes. I've got about 40 pieces, some with London, some with Seattle, some with L L.A. players. We just had some pieces done. I still haven't received them yet from, from Seattle. But those are, again, for movie trailers. Again, it boils down to budget. You need to have a sizable movie budget to go to live orchestra. And then you have union, and then you have a whole team of guys that have to work. You have orchestrators, copyists. It's a big process. So um, I would like to say more, but right now I'll probably have about 50 pieces recorded by live orchestra. So when working on a big movie production, how much of the budget is actually segmented towards the music? Unless you're a, a known, you know, first-rate, First call guy like John Williams, Hans Zimmer, uh, they'll probably get might get five percent. Most the rule of thumb is one to three percent of the overall budget, but that also includes licensing of songs. So it gets a little more complicated. You have to figure out how much score you're going to have, how many how many songs you're going to have, and what orchestra you're going to use, what the expense will be. 
But I would go off that 1% to 3% as a general rule. Okay, so you're saying for about a $100 million movie, uh, a portion of 1% to $3 million is for the music. What would you say for a smaller budget film, you know, about $20,000, $200,000? $200,000? Mm-hmm. $20 to $40, I would say. <laughs> wait, wait, what to, was no, $200,000 is a very low. And by, yeah. I shouldn't laugh because with digital technology, a lot of student films, guys are doing it on a shoestring budget. I would say your average low-budget film... Um, the music budget would be between ten and twenty-five thousand dollars. So you're looking at several million, maybe two million dollar movie. So when a director gives you the call about a movie and you're looking at it with no music in it whatsoever, what is the where's the first step? Where do you start? What happens? It's a good question. Things have changed with the advent of digital technology. It's gotten easier and easier, especially for the editors that are they're major power brokers because they make a lot of decisions. Once they make those decisions, everyone else is kind of glued to it. And what I mean by that is they, they take other scores, they're called temp scores, temporary, place them to really get the vibe, the feel of the scene. And many times, once you hear it over and over, people are just wedded to it. And many film composers kind of have to go that direction. But either way, I tell other film composers and people who want to do it, you cannot be a prima donna. You're not doing a pop record. You're in a service industry. You're basically, someone's coming to you and say, I'd like the follow, like you're an architect. I would like this in the front, this in the back. I'd like to structure it a certain way. And you kind of have to do what they want to do. Mm -hmm. um, some of it's taste, but you really have to have the chops to be able to move from one style of music to another, because they're going to be attached to something. And they're going to say, this is what I want. What word of advice or words of wisdom would you give to someone that wants to pursue a career in this business? Well, go into it knowing that it's very tough. It's probably tougher than it was in the past. There's more competition. There's more product. But technology has also brought prices down. And demands have gone up or higher. What I mean by that is you better know music, number one. You can't stand there stammering when they say, well, can't you do that? I know you're great. You're great at like heavy metal, but can you do Hans Zimmer? Can you do John Williams? You really have to know your music theory. You have to know your music technology because I think the greater percentage of work now, I can't give you the exact number, but I would say a small percentage of work in Hollywood is being done by live orchestras. A lot of it is, is virtual. So know your stuff. The other thing is personal relationships are crucial. It's, a lot of it's who you happen to know. It's, it's chance. But you have to have people have to like you, and that might explain why I'm a complete failure. I haven't had <laughs> one job. No. We love uh, you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, but, uh, that, yeah, that's, that's the rule of thumb. Know your stuff. Don't walk in there thinking, I can wing it. So tell us what you thought when you got the phone call from Myerspace.com to do the music for them. Well, another crazy Hollywood call. But I checked it out, and it was, it was Bill Shatner's site. I'm a big fan. And I know some of the principals involved, and I thought it was a great idea. As it is now, I get emails all the time from people who somehow find my website. They go, please, can you give me advice? This is what I want to do. You know, it's really it's very touching. But this is a way to just streamline it. Let's just let's do it for the community. Everyone should help each other in, in this business, my, my opinion. Well, thanks, Richard, for being here with us today on My Outer Space TV on Planet Orpheus. My pleasure. My pleasure. I'm number one. And I'm number two. For, for My, my Outer, Outer Space, Space TV. TV.